Good morning. It is good to see everyone here on this June 5th. Yes, it is June. Can you believe it? Summer is here. Uh, Welcome on this day. Uh, We are in the process of remodeling the women's restroom. So the main women's restroom that you might normally use is closed. And so we have the other women's restroom, which is down uh, the other hallway. Uh, In case you don't know where that is, uh, it can be down there. But uh, Check it out. Uh, the men's has been updated, and uh, we're very happy for, for that to get going. In case you were not here last week, uh, big shout out to Tim Mitchell, Lloyd Holbrook, Michael Bauer, and Doug Partlow uh, for painting and redoing the flooring and just all the things that get our, our restrooms since they were um, originally built back in 99 uh, to give them get them updated with new flooring and uh, countertops and so forth. So that's very, very good. So today, after the first service, uh, we will be having our annual congregational meeting. I know it's the highlight of the year for many of you, and so it will start at 1040, and so after this meeting ends, you'll have time to grab a quick cup of coffee, come back in, and uh, uh, engage in the discussion of the the ministries of the church and uh, the business of the church that happens Um, at the congregational meeting. So today is Pentecost. You may have noticed that. So uh, thus the decorations in red and orange and yellow and the celebration of the gift of the Spirit uh, that came upon the people. So we'll be celebrating Pentecost today as well. And you may notice the bowl of water that is up here. So we're going to do a special celebration today as well, and that is coming up shortly. Uh, But for Pentecost, we want to get into our first scripture reading, which comes from Acts. When When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from the heaven, there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there, was, there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Pythians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phygia and Papilla, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Proslight, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews, and all who lived in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is, on, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the head, below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood 
before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. God of spirit, we give thanks that when you sent your advocate, the apostles were empowered to speak about your deeds of power in all languages for every people. Give us boldness to share the spirit power with our neighbors. Amen. In recent weeks, we've been reading in the book of Acts about Paul and uh, some believers in the, uh, in the city of Philippi and the struggles that they were undergoing as they were establishing the church there, the, the persecution and so on that, that they all received. Uh, we have no reason to believe that that persecution, those trials and tribulations ended. And in fact, we know that Paul himself was in chains. And so we need to listen to these words that, uh, from the book, that, from the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians, quoting from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. So let us, in our times of trials and tribulations, hear these words of encouragement. <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Now the Lord is near, so do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Steve is part of the uh, Bible studies throughout the week and on Tuesdays, and he just, <clears throat> you can tell the Spirit of God is with him when he reads those scriptures. The Spirit is moving and moves within us. And so on this day of Pentecost, I look to what have we have experienced as a church, what have you experienced as as people in the community and with your families. And as we come now into this first Sunday of this summer season, not a surprise that many are enjoying the great weather out and about, sporting events, camping, vacationing, and so forth. But we look to what are we engaged in? What are we committed to? Where are we giving our time? And so I came across a series of questions over the last several years that I have asked during um, our Sundays together, and so I thought I'd share some of them now. And so it's a question of how are we doing in our loving? How are we doing in our mission as a church, as an individual people? So where were you last year at this time in your life? Now, I have a lot of questions here, and I can gladly share these later, but just kind of to think about, because what I see here with Acts and the Holy Spirit that's coming upon people and creating this new understanding, people being able to speak in languages that they've never spoken in before, it's a disruption in their life, and God is calling them to continue to spread this love and the gospel, and they're talking about the deeds of God's power out into this world, and so it's moving them in a different direction, it's not letting them stay stuck. So for us, where were you last year at this time in your life? What was your life or your context or your situation like? What were you doing with the problems in your life? What were your problems? What were you thankful about last year? What was happening in your relationships? What was happening in your job or in school? Do you find yourself now complaining about the same things in your life that you were back then? Maybe the same people? 
Do you find yourself complaining about the same things or the same people in your life? Have they changed or have you changed? If life was bad or not what you wanted, what changes have you made? In our season of Advent last December, did you learn something in that waiting period, expectation period of Advent? Or how about more recently in in March and April for Easter, in that journey to the cross? Did you learn anything about your life, about your faith during that time? What role has your faith played in your life? Did you change anything in your approach to praying, to going to church? to reading your Bible, to your giving, to your volunteering, to the producing of fruit? How about loving others, showing grace, extending mercy or forgiveness? So big questions, right? Big questions that were asked, what is going on? And um, sometimes we can find ourselves stuck or in a rut or change. But last week we were talking about Humility, and this humility again is not so much being humble as in not boasting, but this humility, this recognition in our life are we willing to humble ourselves and be aware of God's work and power in our life and to let a transformation occur? to be led, to be willing to follow a way that is often contrary to the wide open path that the world would try to lead us down. So I have a few more questions. Maybe you've reached your destination. Maybe you've had some good progress. So now what? Maybe you graduated. Now what? Maybe you have your degree from a college or seminary or from school or from wherever. Now what? Maybe you've come from from this other town and now you live here. You're living here for what? You've come from somewhere to now you're here for what? Maybe you've been saved from sin for what? Maybe you've been healed from something Or what have you been healed? Your journey, your life, your purpose isn't over. You are coming from somewhere, heading into God's will for, and then you have to fill in the blank. I guess what I want you to think of is sometimes we are healed from something, which is definitely good. We usually ask God to heal us in our physical conditions, and so again, how are, we being, how are we asking God to heal us in our spiritual conditions, the way we think? So again, as last week as we talked, that we might have the mind of Christ. But we've been healed from something. Maybe if we look at it, we've been healed for something. You've been healed for something. What is that? What is it that you're doing? Now, we may not know all these questions and and so forth, but it's interesting and helpful for you to ask questions to figure out where you are in your life, where are maybe some blind spots to your own life that you're not seeing. The consequences of ignorance is to write off the importance of what you have heard or witnessed or experienced. That day, they were there all gathered, and the rush of a mighty wind came into the room. Now, we often downplay the rush of this mighty wind. This is the same language used as the primordial wind, the spirit of God that blew across the waters in Genesis. It is a creative spirit. This is not the light breeze that you may have felt in the last day or so. This is a rush of a mighty and violent wind that comes in and gets your attention. If you've ever been, when those straight line winds come across you or you've been near a tornado, it is thunderous. It gets your attention. You are looking. You are expecting something. Something is going to happen. Your heart is racing. And the spirit comes upon people and they they don't know quite how to describe it. They're bewildered, they're perplexed and they see these things that look like flames and tongues and they're they're resting on each 
each person, and then they start speaking in languages that they've never spoken in before. Now, this is not the glossiola or speaking in tongues that Paul writes about in 1 Corinthians. These are people that were having normal conversation and now are all of a sudden speaking in a language they've never heard before. But they're speaking in languages that the other people around them that had been living in the cities that had come from other parts of the world recognized. So we could might think, for example, Daniel from Nigeria is here and then all of a sudden he hears someone speaking in his native tongue. Or maybe you've traveled or been in the military in another part of the world and all of a sudden you hear somebody speaking even in the same accent from where you grew up. There's a recognition, there's a comfort. The Spirit comes on and speaks and people are talking about what God has been doing, deeds of power and might and healing. They're talking about the good news of Jesus Christ in a way that all people from no matter where they are in the world can understand it. This happened on Pentecost. Now, Christians did not invent Pentecost. Pentecost was a Jewish holiday, Shavuot, which happens 50 days after the Passover. So it marks the times where the, where the Jewish people, the Hebrews, were released, freedom from captivity in Israel, to 50 days where they received the law and the spirit of freedom on Mount Sinai. They were in there to celebrate Pentecost. We celebrate Pentecost because the Spirit had come upon all people. Just as Jesus described it earlier in Luke 24. So that all people would understand. Now what's interesting when you think about this is, God wasn't forcing people to understand it in one language. God wasn't forcing people to change who they were to come in in Believe in God. God's spirit came in in a way that no matter who you were, from what part of the world, from what you looked like, from what language you spoke, God said, I'm going to meet you where you are and start developing this relationship with you. It's important for us to understand because Sometimes we can get so centric on our view of Christianity, on our view of God. And God's like, and there are people across this world that you've never seen or heard what they talk like, and I love them as much as you. And they're all going to hear about me. And we're all going to worship together and sing together, and they're going to believe in something. They're going to recognize this call of love within them because I made them in my image just like I made you in my image. The Spirit of God came in and upset the apple cart. Made something happen. Changed the direction of lives. Fulfilled the prophecy. This is what Pentecost is. And so how does it find us today? Sitting comfortable? Sitting in the status quo? Sitting here thinking that spreading the news of God and being about the ministry of God? Being about the teachings of Jesus is somebody else's responsibility? No, well, God came in and said, my spirit is upon all of you. And they, they had no other choice. From within them rose up this ability to proclaim the goodness of God. Last Sunday I said, there should be no one here more fired up about preaching Jesus Christ and about doing the ministry of God than everyone sitting there that day. And that goes for us here today. We should never ever be thinking, well, those young people, they're the future of the church. No, you're the future of the church right now. Amen. We can't sit here and think, oh, it's up to those 20 year olds, those 30 year olds. I really wish those, those mothers who are working a job or two would come here and help out more. What were you doing when you were 20 and 30, right? This is all the church. We got to be fired up. And the Spirit comes upon us. The Spirit comes upon everyone in the mission of who we are and calls us to be. We need to be fired up. When we look out in the world and see all the naked... <coughs> Man, my allergies are rough today. When we um, 
look out in the world and see all the negativity that's going on? I'll tell you what, I see that. But that doesn't have to define my story. That doesn't have to be my narrative. I'm going to go out and say, I know a way. I know a God. I know a Jesus Christ. I know a way of love. And that's what I'm going to preach. And that's when I'm going to live. I may not do it right. And I may mess it up. But that's what I'm going to be. Because somebody's got to continue to show love and mercy and grace out there in this world. That's who we're called to be as followers of Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit, oh, come upon us, Lord. Change us. Make this all right. Give me what I need. Here's my list of prayer requests. Make it all go away. The Holy Spirit, paraclete, is the one who comes alongside. I hate to break it to you, but the one who comes alongside doesn't magically make it all go away. He comes alongside and empowers you, enables you, and enlivens you. It's the catalyst for who you are and who we need to be. So that as we get to the scripture that Steve read for us today, this letter to, to Philippi, to the church in Philippi, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And there's times I don't feel like rejoicing, right? I mean, there's just downright crappy things that happen in life. But if you've never practiced, if you've never worshiped, if you've not had a, a, a discipline of reading the Bible, of being in prayer, it's hard to get back into something. Because sometimes we approach our Christianity, we approach our faith as consumers. We've talked about this before. Consumers blame products when something doesn't go right. It's never the consumer's fault. If we approach Christianity, it was, well, it's not my fault, it's the church's fault. It's God's fault. Then you never have to change. You can be stuck. I mean, you can be right where you want to be the whole time. People are usually committed thing to commit are committed to things that are devoted to until they're not. Which is why we had these questions. Where have you been? What have you experienced? Where are you now? Have there been any changes? If there's not been any changes, then what what can you do? And so as a church, for us, when we celebrated the dissolving of this mortgage, that's, that's a new opportunity. You know what we're going to do next Sunday? Bring your work gloves, because we're planting seeds. We're planting seeds in faith that those seeds are going to grow. How many of you here can make a seed grow? You can? How'd you do that? Well, if you... Put it in, yeah, if you put it in water, it, right. You help it. But when you put that seed in the ground, what are you doing? It's a moment of faith, isn't it? I hope it grows. I think about that every time when I see the farmers and their big tractors planting thousands of acres of seeds. I'm like, man, that's a lot of money if those seeds don't grow. It's a lot of money if the floods come in and wipe it out. But those seeds continue to grow in faith. We're going to plant seeds in faith. Now, we know what's going to grow from those seeds. It's going to be wheat and grass, grass seed. But it's a sign. And we're going to do that with the kids. Because we're going to help the kids see faith from how we model our faith. It's not my job or Heather Perot's job to teach your kids and grandkids faith. It's all of us to show faith and model faith, the ups and downs of faith. So Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I would say rejoice. That's a joy. That's not happiness. That means there's something within me that is still going to come to the Lord. Because there's a goodness that I just cannot let go of. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Gentleness is a way of living life. There's so much here in this Philippians passage that we're going we're gonna to come back to and actually dig way deep. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. That doesn't mean be a pushover. 
That means you empower. You are empowered. You have power over how you are going to respond to people in your life. Let your gentleness, not let your up in everyone's face attitude like the world would be. The Lord is near. Verse five, the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. God hears constantly from me, Lord, I worry about this. Lord, I'm anxious about this. So when I hear people say, don't worry about it, God's got it, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm still worrying, but I'm telling God every day about it, just in case God forgot. We're still having that conversation. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace, that means there's something that happens that even I can't put words to, that I can't describe, nor you. Something is there where God's saying, I got you. I'm alongside you. I understand this might be a tough road, or I understand this might be a road in which you're really happy, but I am right there. Let's walk this together. Let's walk this together. So my friends, on this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. If you've not felt the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, start praying immediately. Say, God, I want, I want to know this. I want to feel this. I heard that pastor talk about the Holy Spirit moving and talking and energizing. I haven't felt that. I want that. I want that relationship with you. I don't want it so I can brag about it. I want it because I want something closer and deeper, Lord, that only you can provide. Ask for it. Believe in it. And keep asking. The Lord is near. Amen? Amen. Amen.